This is something that we all want. Beautiful, shining, vibrant H-Alpha regions in a galaxy with a cool new script that's available for Pixinsight. Insight. At the time of recording this video, this channel just hit 50 subscribers. I would like to thank each one of you for making this happen. And without further ado, let's begin. It will take a couple of minutes before I get to color mapper script. So if you're just interested in that, fast forward to this time. As usually, I will start with loading the master files. To shot this galaxy, I use the L-Pro filter and the Optolon L ultimate to capture the hydrogen alpha regions. So these are the two master files. I will just auto stretch them and unlink the channels so we can better see the data. These files are not star aligned as you can see. So this is the first step I will do for that. I will use the star alignment process. Just select the L extreme and apply it to the L pro master file. The frames are now aligned. And I will use the dynamic crop tool to get rid all of these excess pixels. I will first drag the instance on the L Extreme data so we have the same exact crop and hit the green tick to apply to the L Pro data. Now the two master files are cropped exactly the same and star aligned. I can now proceed to gradient removal. For that, I will use the Grexpert script. I have a video showing how to install and use this script, so check it out if you're interested. I will do the same process on both images. The correction is subtraction and smoothing zero. The L-Extreme data is now gradient free and we can see that Graxpert maybe did a little bit of over subtraction because these regions are a little bit darker than the background but I will not worry about that. Now I will do the same thing on the L-Pro data. Just check out the top right corner how Gradient Expert will deal with that. It's an amazing script. Awesome results as usual. I will now proceed to spectrophotometric color calibration. Before I can use that, I will need to plate solve the image. So for that, I will use script, image analysis and image solver. The target is of course M33, the triangle and galaxy. I will search for that. So like the focal distance is correct for this image, but in the beginning I cropped a large portion of the frame. So I'm hoping the image solver can deal with that. Great, the image is now solved and we can proceed with uh, SPCC. I will choose a region of dark sky for background neutralization and drag the triangle to the L-Pro data. SPCC did its job. I just wanted to mention that normally I would play with filter management and dial in the L-Pro wavelength, but for the sake of this video and to keep it a little bit shorter, I won't bother with that. I have another video where I do this, so check it out. I can now close SPCC, redo the stretch, delete the preview, and proceed with Blur Exterminator. I will use the same settings for both images, raise the sharpen stars parameter a little bit and drag the triangle to the first image and the second image. Wonderful results as usual. We can now proceed to Noise Exterminator. I like to lower the denoise slider a little bit. In my taste, the default settings are a little bit too aggressive, so 0.75 for the L Pro data because it's a little less noisier. Well, actually, a lot less noisier. And 0.85 for the L Extreme data. Great. Next on the list is Star Exterminator. So for the L Extreme data, we don't actually need to generate the star image. So I will just get rid of that. On default, I use a large overlap because I, I'm using the GPU acceleration, so it's not really taking that long. And for the L Pro data, I will generate star image and unscreen the stars. Perfect. I will minimize the stars and work on that later. Renaming the images will make my life a little easier. So I will just choose L Pro and L Extreme for this one. Now we can start to actually add the H-Alpha signal to the RGB image and for that we are going to use the narrowband color mapper script to which I will get in a minute. But before that I will need to separate the RGB channels. There is a handy button for that which says split RGB channels. The green and blue channels are not actually necessary for the L-Pro data so I will keep just the red and do the same thing for the L-Extreme data. And again the blue and green channels are not necessary. This looks really noisy, but don't worry, it's not that terrible. I can actually get rid of the L Extreme master file as well, I won't need that anymore. And minimize the L Pro data. So I am just left with the red channel from the L Pro data and also the red channel from the L Ultimate data. And now we can see that the data is very different. Some of the brightest HA regions are contained in the 
in the red channel of the broadband data, but some of the much fainter nebulae and H alpha regions can be seen only in this red channel from the L extreme data. So what we have to do now is the star continuum, the combined starlight from the stars, mainly from the core, must be subtracted from this image. So we are just left with the pure H alpha signal. As mentioned for that, I will use the color mapper script. There's plenty of information, mainly from Adam Block on how to use this script and install. I will not go through all the details because to be honest, it's a massive script. I'm just wrapping my head around it. So I'll just use the basic tools to get the job done. So after opening the NB color mapper, we will need to add these two layers the red channel from the LPRO data and red channel from the Alex tree. So I will do that real quick. And by default the channel will be saturated, but in this case we are not interested in saturating the channels, so I will put saturation to zero and update the list. I will now add the second layer, which is LPRO red channel. Again saturation to zero and update the list. We will now have a look in histogram controls and here in this histogram we can see that the L extreme data is a little farther to the right so we will need to equalize that. I will choose the L Pro which is a little darker hit edit and raise the midtones so they are much closer to each other. You will need to play with the values and look at the histogram to get the right number but now you can see using midtones 0.15 the channels are nearly perfectly overlapping, so that's what we wanted. Hit update. And now for this subtraction. This preview window is a blend of the two layers, but I can choose not to include a layer, so I can shift click on this green tick and disable the LPRO red channel. And we are just left with this noisy L Extreme data. Now select the L Extreme, hit edit and use these modification controls. The operation will be add. The layer to use is layer number one, which is the L Pro, which we can see here. I will apply median offset and by adding a negative number, we are subtracting. And now again, you need to find the proper value to subtract from the L extreme data to be left just with the H alpha regions. Okay, so after some experimentation, the correct number for me is 0 0.038. It seems like I'm just left with the H alpha details and you can see that there are areas that are really dark. We don't need to worry about that because in the next step when we will be blending the images together, the darkest parts will just get ignored. I can now hit update and output the image. Let's see what we got here. It doesn't look like much, but trust me, in the end it will make all the difference in the world. Now I can close the red channel from the L Extreme, I won't need that anymore, and also the red channel from the L Pro data. The next logical step is to blend the H alpha signal into this RGB data from the L Pro filter. For that, I'm again going to use the NB color mapper script, load the L Pro, and of course, load the new created H alpha signal. Hit update and as you can see now the saturation is desired so I will leave that at uh, default 0.5 and we again need to have a look in histogram controls and compare the channels. As you can see again the L Pro is a lot darker so I will need to play with that a little bit to equalize them. Okay, for me the midtones value of 0.16 is the correct one and the channels overlap. Now for the H alpha layer, in this preview we can see that the background is completely red. I will try to raise the black point to get rid of that. For that I will choose the H alpha layer, hit edit and mess with the shadows values. In this case the value is really small, it's 0.0007. I can hit update and output the image. Close the script and look at the result. Well, it's not looking so great, but I think we can work with that. I will clean the workspace, close all the unnecessary images and we can now proceed to stretching. For that, as usual, I will use GHS. Zooming into the histogram, we can immediately see that the red channel is still out of balance. So I will definitely start with pushing it a little bit to the left. For that, I can use transformation type linear and choose just the red channel, drag this triangle and set it back to align with all the other channels. Something like this. Hit the square to apply, reset the tool, disable the STF and again with the transformation type linear I will raise the black point a little bit. Something like this. Reset the tool and we can start stretching. 
I can already start to see some of the red H alpha signal coming through, so that's a good sign here. You should definitely spend some time in GHS, it's probably the most important part of the process of the final result, so give me a couple of seconds, I will try to do my best. Okay, this is pretty good for now, I can close GHS and I can proceed to masks and curves. For the sake of this tutorial I will use just a simple mask and that is the L component and with this one I will do just the basic stuff like desaturating the background, saturating the galaxy and some minor adjustments. Let me do that real quick. Okay, we are now done with the galaxy. The image is looking fairly good. Now it's the time to proceed with the stars. The stars are still in the linear phase, so I will disable the STF. Open the GHS and select Arc Sign H Transformation Type and start stretching. Now I normally stretch until I see a fair amount of stars, but in this case Star Exterminator did pull out a lot of stars from the galaxy itself, so I'm a little bit more interested in the center of the image than the rest because it will add a lot of pop to the galaxy if these stars are all rescreened back. The stretch factor of nearly 10 I think will work good in this case. I will add a little bit more contrast and color again with curves. And as we can see here, even in the stars image, there are some leftover H-alpha regions. So when I will add them back, the final result will be amazing. For rescreening the stars, as usual, I will use the Screen Stars script, which was provided to us by Mr. Bill Blanchon and Mr. Mike Granfield. It's as simple as I can imagine. I will just select the starless view, which in this case is this one, and stars view, which is this one. Hit the green tick. And here it is guys, this is the final result. Let me know in the comments if you have some questions, I will let you be the judge of that, but for me this was a quick edit and the result is amazing. If you're interested I will leave a link in the video description so you can download my data and try it for yourself. Thanks for watching and clear skies!